Hi brothers and sisters and friends. It is July 24th, 2016. So I pray that you all are doing well today. Um, something happened last night and I'm going to share what happened with you. Last night I wanted to go to bed but it was as if God was giving me a word. And it lasted quite a while. I don't even know, to be honest, like maybe an hour and a half, just because I was in his presence. So strong, so strong. And I mean, it was like I was in another place, in another place <laughs> with, with the Lord. And, um, and I just offered up sacrifices. I, you know, burnt. I put some oil on the altar with incense up to the Lord and I prayed and I guess that must have been a sweet aroma and he blessed me with this word and um, it's such a difference this altar I'm telling you it if the Lord has put it in your heart it is really such a difference so anyway, I'm not going to keep talking about that, but just, I don't know, do it. So anyway, I did that last night and I was uh, just, honestly, I was just trying, I was saying my prayers to go to bed. I was saying my prayers to go to bed and one thing led to another and next thing I know, I, I receive a word and it's like 11 o'clock at night and I'm writing this word down and I'm reading the Bible and I'm writing stuff down you know and then I finally was able to go to sleep but um so anyway let me share with you what I was led to here so during prayer as I'm praying the spirit of the Lord just came upon me so strong and I was still and I was quiet and I heard my name I heard Angela Chop, chop. Okay, you got my attention. Like, chop, chop. Come on, quick, quick. Hurry, hurry. Chop, chop is a phrase. And it uses, it means hurry, hurry. And it suggests that something should be done now and without any delay. So, okay, Lord, you got my attention. <laughs> what is it? So I'm asking the Lord, asking the Father, what does this mean? And it was as if I was taken and I got this vision or dream or something. I, I, was, I received a vision or dream. And I, it was as if I was in a mall and what it reminded me of it reminded me of the scene from left behind in the movie of left behind there is a scene where they're in uh there, there is they're in a mall and th this is just before the oh <gasps> okay anyway it this was just before the rapture happened Anyway, <laughs> that just came to me like, what? Like, literally, they were just, they were, okay, so anyway, if you, you haven't seen the movie, you, you won't understand what I'm talking about. But right before the rapture happens, people, just like we are right now, we're talking about the rapture. We're talking about Jesus coming. They were talking about prophecy. They were talking, telling people they were reaching the souls. They were reaching the lost with the love of Christ. They were reaching those who don't know God, and they were, they, they were, they were spreading it. They were telling everybody, telling everybody, you know, to repent, to turn, to be saved, to believe. 
because Jesus is coming. The rapture is coming. Like in, in the movie Left Behind. So there was a scene in the mall. And it was like I was in the mall. It was it reminded me of that scene. And in that and in this scene, in this scene where I was, in the mall that I was in, there was time was short and there was an urgency in my spirit to tell people about heaven and to tell people about Jesus and I was going around and I was telling people that we are assigned a tribe and I said we are assigned a tribe I kept saying that to, to people that we are assigned a tribe and I was telling people about heaven and Jesus and they were just looking at me like I have went insane like I have gone crazy and it ended now in that movie Left Behind there was this woman who was warning people and then it happened the rapture happened in a second in the twinkling of an eye the children the bride the people who believe and who are saved they they disappeared they were gone and the seven year tribulation began and that's what it felt like in my dream and revelation just came to me now just now of that movie of that, that that's what it felt like so chop chop so the scripture I'm going to read here um, is Second Chronicles. I read Second Chronicles chapter five through chapter seven, but I'm not going to read all of that to you. Um, but I will read some of it. So I'm going to read chapter six through thirty-four. To 42 if your people go out where you send them to fight their enemies and if they pray to you by turning toward this city you have chosen and toward this temple I have built to honor your name then hear their prayers from heaven and up uphold their cause so right now this is um, who is this Oh, let, let me finish before I go on. Okay, to hold the cross. If they sin against you, and who has never sinned, you might become angry with them and let their enemies conquer them and take them captive to a foreign land far away or near. But in that land of exile, they might turn to you in repentance and pray. We have sinned, done evil, and acted wickedly. If they turn to you with their whole heart and soul in the land of their captivity and pray toward the land you gave their ancestors, toward this city you have chosen, and toward this temple I have built to honor your name, then hear their prayers and their petitions from heaven where you live and uphold their cause. Forgive your people who have sinned against you. Oh my God, may your eyes be open and your ears attentive to all the prayers made to you in this place. And now arise, O Lord God, and enter your resting place along with the ark, the symbol of your power. May your priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation. May your loyal servants rejoice in your goodness. O Lord God, do not reject the king you have anointed. Remember your unfailing love for your servant David. Um, hold on here. There's more. There's so much more here. Okay, so. Mm, sorry. Mm, okay. I have heard your prayer and chosen this temple as a place for making sacrifices. At times I might shut up the heavens so that no rain falls or command grasshoppers to devour your crops or send plagues among you then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray 
and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and restore their land. My eyes will be open and ears attentive to every prayer made in this place. For I have chosen this temple and set it apart to be holy, a place where my name will be honored forever. I will watch over it, for it is dear to my heart. As for you, if you faithfully follow me as David your father did, obeying all my commands, decrees, and regulations, then I will establish the throne of your dynasty. For I made this covenant with your father, with your father David, when I said one of your descendants will always rule over Israel. But if you or your descendants abandon me and disobey the, de the decrees and commands I have given you, and if you serve and worship other gods, then I will uproot you. I will uproot the people from this land that I have given them. I will reject this temple that I have made holy to honor my name. I will make it an object of mockery and ridicule among the nations. And though this temple is impressive now, all who pass by it will be appalled. They will ask, why did the Lord do such terrible things to this land and to this temple? And the answer will be, because his people abandoned the Lord, the God of the ancestors who brought them out of Egypt, and they worshiped other gods instead and bow down to them. That is why he has brought all these disasters on them. So I know that that, that, that was a lot. Uh, but what the Lord is saying here is that those people who are called by his name, if, if his people, his people will just turn, turn to him, repent, pray, he will hear their prayers and he will answer them. Oh, something else just came to me. Okay. In chapter 7, the beginning says, When Solomon finished praying, now that's who it was, Solomon. <laughs> Sorry. Praying, fire flashed down from heaven and burned up the burnt offerings and sacrifices, and the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple. The priests could not enter the temple of the Lord because the glorious presence of the Lord filled it. When all the people of Israel saw the fire coming down and the glorious presence of the Lord filling the temple, they fell face down on the ground and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, He is good. His faithful love endures forever. And then... I'll read on a little bit more here. It says, The king and all the people offered sacrifices to the Lord. King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 22,000 cattle and 120,000 sheep and goats. And so the king and all the people dedicated the temple of God. The priests took their assigned positions, and so did the Levites who were singing, His faithful love endures forever. They accompanied the singing with music from the instruments King David had made for praising the Lord. Across from the Levites, the priests blew trumpets while all Israel stood. So they were making sacrifices and they were worshiping. You know, I hope you're receiving what, I'm, what this is, that these people are... Are, are celebrating you know that trumpets are being are being blown and they're celebrating God has heard their prayers and it's like that time right now chop chop that time right now is to do the Lord's work more than ever it, this is no time for dilly dallying this is the time to stand up and fight. Fight for your life and fight for the lives of our brothers and sisters and our family. Fight through prayer. 
the, the word of God intercede like never before you know and that last um, what I was reading about if you know but if you or your descendants abandon me and disobey the decrees and commands I've given you yes we are saved by grace but we also have duties you know we also play a role in our salvation we also you know we can't expect to be saved and still live in the ways of the world and make it to heaven you know we have to at least try to change but we can't change on our own we change by the help of the Lord Jesus Christ moving in our lives you know God knows our heart. And the Bible tells us this over and over again. As a matter of fact, I just read it. And where did I read it? Um, I don't even know where I read it. But it's in the Bible over and over again. God is faithful. His love endures forever. And... So something else also I wanted to share with you about my dream. I heard for some reason um, one of the tribes I heard that was really spoken out to me was Benjamin. And I don't know why I heard it, but I did. And I'm going to read a little bit about Benjamin. So... Benjamin is one of the 12 tribes, which is the 12 sons of the, the patriarch of Israel, who each became the father of a tribe of the ancient nation of Israel. And the tribes are Reuben, Simon, or, or Simeon, Levi, Judah, uh, Zebulun, Iskar, Dan, Gad, Ashar, Naphtali, Joseph, which is also Ephraim and Manasseh, and Benjamin. So, reading about um, Benjamin, let me, oh, hold on, sorry. Mm, where is it? I don't know. So, hold on. Okay. So, according to the tribe... Okay, according to the Torah, the tribe of Benjamin... Uh, name appears... Biniam, son of my right hand. From after the conquest of the promised land by Joshua until the formation of the first kingdom of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin was part of a loose confederation of Israelite tribes. No central government existed. In the time of crisis, the people were led by ad hoc leaders known as judges. The entire tribe of Benjamin, women and children included, was almost wiped out by the other Israelite tribes after the Battle of Gibeah. The remnant of the tribe was spared and allowed to marry women of another town whose husbands had been killed to enable the tribe to continue. Responding to a growing threat of Philistine incursions, the Israelite tribes formed a strong centralized monarchy. The first king of this new entity was Saul, from the tribe of Benjamin, which at the time was the smallest of the tribes. He reigned from Gibeah for 38 years. After Saul died, all the tribes other than Judah remained loyal to the house of Saul. But after the death of Ishbosheth, I'm sorry, I can't say that name. Saul's son and successor to the throne of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, joined the northern Israelite tribes in making David, then king of Ju Judah. 
king of the United Kingdom of Israel and Judah. On the accession of Re Rehoboam, David's grandson, the northern tribe split from the house of David to reform a kingdom of Israel. The tribe of Benjamin remained part of the kingdom of Judah until Judah was conquered by Babylon and the population deported. So that's just very interesting how um, towards the end Benjamin remained part of the kingdom of Judah until Judah was conquered by Babylon. But it's also interesting how it said that the 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 tribe of Benjamin was the remnant of it. Well, what did it, what did it say? The remnant of the tribe was spared and allowed to marry women. So I mean, there's just I don't know if anybody has more um, more insight and revelation on this tribe and like what it what this tribe means and why. I would hear that out of um, everything because I was saying that we are assigned a, a tribe um, so yeah if you can tell me just what you receive from this <laughs> um, that's all I have to share with you so pray about what you hear please let me know below God bless you I love you and I will talk to you later goodbye